here's what's coming up on the Cold Popcast. Do you think they should still uphold the reparation, the idea of reparations? You can't actually have any sort of process of handing out reparations without knowing exactly where somebody comes from. Or stop so, destroying your nuclear yeah. families. It's gonna, it's gonna incentivize families being together. Yeah. What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the Cold Popcast. I'm Zo. And I'm Steve. And today we're gonna be talking about reparations. Do we need them or right. do we not need them? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the topic of the day. Uh, really, so the conversation around reparations has been ongoing pretty much since slavery ended. Yeah, literally right. for like the last hundreds of years. Yeah, so it started off, people were saying, hey, you know, I believe uh, President Abraham Lincoln actually said that you know, freed slaves would get 40 acres and a mule. Yeah. But then Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, mm -hmm. and we didn't get anything. Yeah, they were just like, well, he's dead. I don't know. Hey, he said it. Yeah. <laughs> they washed their hands of it. Like, yeah. All right, no more. <laughs> and everyone cried then. Yeah, they just decided, like, okay, well, there's a new president now, so whatever Lincoln said, that pretty much doesn't work. Fortunately, they couldn't do that with slavery. Like, yeah. They couldn't say, like, oh, Lincoln's dead, so I guess we'll the slaves are back. And no, no, no. We found a way to work that one out. Don't worry, guys. You're still going to be working. Don't, don't, don't get any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, and wh white Americans, uh, they pretty much hold 84% of the total U.S. wealth, but make up only 60% of the total population of the U.S., which is kind of insane. Wealth disparity. Yeah. There's a huge wealth disparity and, uh, black people are typically suffering because, uh, the history of slavery affected land ownership, housing, overall health and uh, the, just cause a lot of suffering in black families. Like, for example, uh, my grandparents, they weren't slaves, but mm -hmm. they were sharecroppers. You know, they worked on farms picking cotton. Yeah. You know, and I feel like there's a lot of black people today that can relate to that. And as it stands, you know, a person that was on a farm picking cotton definitely wouldn't have been wealthy. Yeah. You know? I, I know that uh, well, with my family, I'm not sure, if, like, who were sharecroppers, but um, I do have a lot of family on one side of my family that, like, uh, has a lot of farmland out in the south, uh, so I'm sure, like, to some extent, somebody in that lineage was sharecropping or either, like, founded some land or something that was available, and then they were able to, like, cultivate that. And then I think uh, I think on my um, father's side, like, most of them just ended up moving up north, which is how I got here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, my family did the same thing. They just moved north because there was an abundance of jobs. Yeah. You know, there were more jobs and they were less racist. That's which true. is pretty much a good place to live if you're black. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I see a lot of blacks in cities nowadays. Take, you know, look at your maps. Yeah. So, uh, you know, black people did end up sort of being disenfranchised afterwards, though, because, you know, they would come to the cities, but that doesn't mean they completely had escaped racism. Mm -hmm. You know, even as time went on, you had things like the Jim Crow, uh, Jim Crow laws, the whole yeah. Jim Crow era. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the black communities were sort of impacted by issues like mass incarceration, over-policing, and housing discrimination. Yeah. Redlining. Yeah, so redlining was basically an example of when the uh, like housing authorities or the real estate agents or anybody involved in the real estate industry, they would basically not allow black people to buy homes in certain areas, mm -hmm. which led to a huge discrimination amongst black people being forced to live in what we would today just call the hood. Yeah, or, you know, low-income areas in general. Yeah. So um, so that's kind of how that uh, low, that slowly, uh, that process slowly sort of happened. Um, but then they would gentrify these areas, right? And gentrification, if you didn't know, um, is the process by which character of a poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, improving housing, and attracting new businesses, typically displacing current inhabitants in the process. So they would be forced to live in these, you know, low income areas, these hoods, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Then they would have their homes literally ripped out from under them by <laughs> white people. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, they basically moved in. Uh, uh, I've assumed like the housing of the income, the taxes, um, what you call, like the housing taxes and stuff like that pretty much started to raise, making it unaffordable for, you know, poor blacks or um, people. Well, let's say we'll stick with blacks. A lot of them weren't like had the ability to actually move up. Um, economically at the time. So yeah, a lot of poor blacks that weren't able to either sustain living in those areas or couldn't afford to move in them anymore. So they would be consistently like, you know, basically pushed into more low income areas. And those areas would, you know, without any money or productivity happening, and it would essentially turn into ghettos and lead to a lot of the systemic cultural issues we have today. Yeah. And they'd be devoid of opportunity. That's one of the main things. Because within these communities, um, the money and resources that should have technically been owned by black people were sort of taken from them by the white 
slave owners or the white landowners or the white yeah. people that were running the businesses. Yeah, yeah. and when that like um, the crux of sharecropping and how because essentially like um, even though it wasn't like technically slavery, um, uh, one of the tactics they would use to kind of basically uh, force them in a cycle of not being able to really leave or make money uh, is that the tools and the cost of like the labor they would put on the uh, workers themselves. So it was like, okay, I know you pretty much like culti- like did all this land work today, but you know we have to take out um, our share from the fact that you used our tools. Um, you know, you were using our housing, you know, the food you were eating during the time. So all that would go be put back on the slaves and they essentially would make no money. Right. And they would actually put a big, like, um, upcharge on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember the exact word. They would inflate the cost. Yeah. Uh, I was, I've got the word too. I was going to say There's it. a specific word for it. But yeah. yeah. They would like inflate the cost. Um, and this interest also, or no, not, no, that's not only for loans. Okay. Yeah. It wouldn't necessarily be interest. Right. Uh, cause interest would be like if they borrowed the money and then they would charge more on top of it. It's more like, okay, so you live on our land, you're eating food here. So like, say, uh, if you were a white guy that goes to the grocery store to get a can of pop, yeah. right? you know, it's going to cost the white guy 25%, but it's going to cost the you know, sharecropper 50 cents, mm. you know? So they're just making sure they get as much of their money back in their pocket because yeah. they can't legally own slaves. But they can ensure that you only make, like, say you made $50, they're going to make sure you spend 45 of it on the plantation. Right. You know? And uh, my grandma actually had a good example of that. Uh, she said, like, right before she ended up leaving the plantation she was working on, she said that um, uh, she brought in, because basically they would they would bring the cotton to the person, and then the person would... The, the person that owned the land, mm-hmm. they, would, uh, they would take the cotton, and they would uh, give it to him. Then he would pay them out at the end of the month. So... Pretty much one of the main reasons that they ended up leaving the South was because they brought that cotton to the person who owned the land, and the person was like, oh, well, actually, you owe us money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out you're not going to get paid anything today. Yeah. You're gonna, you're, you've been working for a month now, and you're going to get nothing. Yeah, you've been growing quite the debt, madam. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. want to tell them all our money's been going? Yeah, it's actually insane, man. So just <laughs> situations like that, you know, literally being robbed. Um, that's why uh, the historical disenfranchisement of the current, uh, you know, generation has led to this sort of racial wealth gap. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. But uh, do do we have any uh, videos, or is it more just? Uh, uh, this is just going to be us talking for the most part. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess since we, if we're going to lead it right back, uh, you know, now you got a, a kind of a historical idea about you know um, why reparations were a topic uh, to begin with post slavery. Um, Let's start with, uh, do you think uh, do you think they should still uphold the reparations, the idea of reparations and give blacks reparations? Like, do you think, still think that's something that should be on the table and adhere to? So my thing is that, you know, if reparations weren't due to black people, then they wouldn't have ever offered them to other races, you know? Yeah. So they've offered reparations to Native Americans, for example. Native Americans have received billions of dollars. They've also received land, you know, where they have their... Um, what are they called? Oh, uh, reservations. Reservations. Yeah, mm-hmm. they have they have land. They have reservations. They were given billions of dollars. Uh, Asian Even Americans were reparations. Reservations. Uh, Asian Americans were given reparations because uh, they were basically enslaved during World War Two. You know, yeah. in internment camps. Yeah. Um, but I think that the situation with black people is a little bit different, just because the reparations we would receive would be so far removed from the time at which the um, event of slavery happened. Yeah. And even with of the event that Jim Crow happened that it would be very convoluted trying to figure out how and who and when and why. Like, who's going to get the money, how much money, and all those different things. Right. Like, for example, if they would have just did the 40 acres and a mule thing. At the time. I'm sure a lot of our listeners have heard of 40 acres and a mule. Right. Uh, If they would have just done 40 acres and a mule back then, this wouldn't even be a conversation. Yeah. And like I said, you would have been able able to more easily tie, like, who needs it or who's actually going to get it because, I mean, the people who are affected by it were still, were still alive. Yeah. You know, now that time's gone on, there's been, like, a lot of, uh, you know, generational distance from, uh, you know, knowing, like, who, like, which lineage of people is technically entitled to it, who wouldn't be. And now, it, you know, with that, it's kind of just gone to an idea that, like, well, you know, just give it to black people. But then you run into a lot of problems because it's like, I mean, there's a lot of black people. Um, and this is what they point out in certain, like, um, you know, pro-black communities where, um, you have black people who aren't necessarily descendants of people who were slaves. You have a lot of immigrants coming in, either from Caribbean areas or Africans and stuff like that, who are basically first, second generation, who weren't technically tied to like those uh, um, the pe- the blacks that were actually like um, affected by slavery, uh, like directly or in, in their family's history. Um, and then you have people, you know, you have the idea that you know there's been a lot of interracial mixing, so 
Um, certain people who are mixed, um, you know, it's like, well, do they get tied into it too? Right. So they have kind of a split lineage, you know. Do they it, break even? Yeah, yeah. Do they get, they owe a little bit, they get a little bit. Like, so it's, it's pretty much hard to like delineate that now. Um, and so I think that's what uh, one of the issues that we run into. And then another factor that I was going to ask you about next is like, how do we do it now? Are we talking about just giving everyone a lump sum? Like, um, or is it like something more to it now that we're kind of at this phase? So do you think like, assuming we're like, okay, reparations, you know, because we were promised it, never got it. Um, and other groups have benefited from getting it. So why shouldn't we, let's say we take, go down the road of, yeah, um, we deserve reparations. What is the most effective way in your idea to do it? And like, so how, how would we get reparations? Like, um, in your opinion? Uh, in my opinion, you know, and obviously, you know, I'm just one black guy. Yeah. You know, what do you my know? My opinion on how reparations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my opinion on reparations, you know, obviously it's not the end all be all, but um, I was actually thinking about this earlier. Uh, I feel like if they're going to give out reparations, they need to figure out like a system of identifying how, um, how like, they need it's going to involve the lineage like mm -hmm. it, it, it pretty much has to involve the lineage you can't actually have any sort of process of handing out reparations without knowing exactly where somebody comes from uh because like there was an example that i had heard like or that i read they were saying barack obama wouldn't qualify for reparations under some of the like proposed sort of like templates that they have yeah. for uh reparations because he's like part kenyan or something like that okay uh but so then so if you have any like well, yeah, I guess Kenyan because he doesn't have he's half white and then half Kenyan, so it's like tending. I guess neither part of his lineage ties back to right. Him. But then the weird thing is Malia Obama, his child, like his children, would qualify for reparations because it's Barack Obama and um, oh, Michelle. Michelle. And Michelle who oh, is yeah, an yeah. American African American. She's an African American. Okay, okay. so it's like you can't change your lineage as easy as Barack can. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's sort of. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, my, like, like everyone gets reparations. Obama's the only one that, like, his kids get it. He's sitting there with no check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like worth like ten million dollars now. Yeah, that will be all right. Yeah, it'll be fine. But, but think about the mixed black guy who had black children. That is going to be fine. You know, the guy that's like, man, you know, I spent all my years working at this factory, and yeah, my kids got money, but like they weren't busted their ass at the factory like me. You know, what am I getting? Yeah, you know, because I just happen to have a Kenyan father who left. His children is blessed. But I, I think a good way. <laughs> trolley problem. Yeah, he's, he's like, I worked for this great land. Where's my reparations? <laughs> yeah, there's there's actually been a lot of lobbying in favor of reparations, but there's also been a lot of people that oppose it. Mm -hmm. uh, people have been against reparations, like mostly like white people, Latinos, Asian Americans. There's <laughs> anyone who's not gonna get it. Yeah, basically, anyone, <laughs> anyone, anybody who would have to pay for it. Yeah, but not get anything out of it, basically, except like uh, maybe a healthier. community community of their country but that's yeah. not worth it to some people yeah um, and and i see that being uh one of the main con issues about like how you would go about because let's say you're like all right well let's give everyone a blank check or we'll give everyone a check um and if you even if you simplify it down to like you know we'll just give every black person anyone who just, if i look at you and you look black you're getting a check um it's like who's gonna pay for it exactly because it's got to come from somewhere if you say the government well that just means you know uh, certain groups are basically gonna have to raise taxes to uh, afford the, you know, help or afford, you know, to pay other people. Right. Budget. I know what budget is, is being reduced. Yeah. And um, and then I guess you kind of get into it because a lot of these people, like, especially being the fact that times when has went on like this, um, a lot more people are going to be reluctant to want to be the ones to pay for it. Because if you're, let's say, a white guy today, you're like, well, I never owned slaves. I never, you know, hurt you know, I never like, you know, heard any person or had any involvement in the current system. So it's like, why should I have to pay? You know, so and that goes for like most people, even like Latinos who probably get lumped into that system. They're like, well, wait a second. You know, what, what am I paying for? You know, this guy, you know, this guy I work with, he's black. But I got to give him money just because he, you know, someone that's died years ago as a slave. So it's just like that's where you get into the complication. Like, how do we do it? Do you think that it's fair to assume that there are groups of white families that no longer reap the benefits of their ancestors that were slave owners? As a white slave owner, you know, as any form of slave owner, you know, there are freed slaves who own slaves as well. But as a white slave owner or a slave owner in general, mm -hmm. there's also the risk that because your family was sort of morally destitute, because your family had the um, lack of morality needed to be a slave owner that there could be a net negative for some of those families if that makes sense does that make any sense uh like you basically because your family because your family line is full of like bigoted racist 
fools. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. then it's like, you know, two generations later, now you're a bigoted racist fool. Right. So you're not going to be able to function in the modern society, if that makes sense. Or you're extremely rich, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, there's some that are like just like white normal. trash guys that yeah. are just normal people that were yeah. like, well, our entire family legacy was built on the foundation of being a bigoted racist yeah. idiot. And there will be like a, an amount taken out of their check every week. Yeah. yeah. And, and for, uh, for the percentage of reparations, yeah. but they're so like, but that's so well, now. Well, now well, I'm trying I was, to think like a devil's advocate. Sorry. Well, yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say um, like I, I gotta, I gotta always kind of be pushed back because I mean it's very easy being a black guy to kind of sit here and can revel in the you know idea that like yeah this, they, everyone was racist back then I deserve this like I yeah I mean I, I have none against it like we got reparations I benefit of course like if we can do it let's do it but I also got to be objective in the idea that you know when Trey was saying like you know if you're white you just automatically benefit I wouldn't say that's necessarily true um be, now granted like in the in the social structure of America it was geared to giving more opportunity to one group than the other back then but that doesn't necessarily mean the outcomes were always going to be the same most whites weren't you know, back then, most of them weren't slave owners. Um, I'd say a, a good minority of people actually owned slaves. Majority of them were white, though. Um, but then it's like, but all black people suffered under that structure. So that's the thing is you're basically atoning for the fact that black people had to suffer um, in mass from that type of thing. Um, but it's like, you know, when you have a system that you would want to put in place to, re um, to you know, make up for that, you basically have to take it out the pockets of all the people involved in that structure, whether they were involved in how, how it was built to harm or not. And I think that's where it's like, well, I can understand the perspective of the you know white family that had nothing to do with it, but they just happened to be white and live in the system as it was. So yeah. it's like, so you have to pay. But I can see how, you know, when you ask the question, does that necessarily make it right? I can see how it really, you know, it is unfair to them. In, in this scenario, there there may be a percentage of black families that will will have to pay. That's true, and that's another slaves. factor, you know, because right. they're like I said, there were other slave or well, black slaves or black freed slaves that owned slaves. Because I, you have to also be objective and think from the time period that it happened in. So it's like you can look back now and say slavery was bad. People who did slavery were, you know, evil racists, but that was just a part of the economy. So it's just like, you know, they were pretty much, they brought, maybe they, you can't, you can say like, you know, whatever their mindset was was a product of their time. So it's like, maybe they weren't hateful people. It was just economically feasible to have a slave. So it's like, they got slave. Like it's like. By, by pre, pre shitty traditions. Yeah. Them by, by people overseas. A hundred percent. I, I think of it like if, if we jump like 300 years in the future and like eating meat is outlawed and the future people think everyone who ate meat was an evil animal hating bastard. Or, you know, sorry for the curse word, but everyone who ate meat was evil. It'd be the same thing where it's like, well, everyone who ate meat wasn't necessarily evil. That's just was a part of the, you know, it that's was, just, it was just a part of how people lived. It was just a part of the times. Yeah, it was like culturally considered. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, acceptable, culturally acceptable. It was just a thing people did. So that's why it's like, um, I have to, I try to think about it in a way of like, um, not in good or bad, just this was the issue. This is who suffered. How do we make up for it? Um, right. And, you know, how you doing it in a way, I guess, that's fair and, and uh, you know, makes sense. And it couldn't just be in terms of, like, how do you make it better? It couldn't just be, OK, all white people or all Americans have to contribute to this reparation fund. I think, like, it goes back to the lineage when I was talking about who should receive the reparations. It's kind of the same thing. Like, if you're an Irish. To begin with too. It's, yeah. That's that's where the complexity comes in. Yeah. Right? That's why it hasn't. I feel like that's like the Black main American reason it hasn't happened. Trace the bloodline to begin with. Yeah, it's pretty tough. You got like the DNA stuff now, like yeah. the DNA tests and everything. Like that, you can kind of and trace we, it to an extent. Like at least, like we know that there will be a large portion of minorities that that won't fall under that bridge of, right. of like having to pay the taxes like for their own fucking reparations, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, what I was saying was basically like if there's an Irish guy that his family moved to America in, you know, 1880 after slavery, should his family have to pay reparations? You know, after slavery ended, they, this white, this, this, you know, Caucasian family, Irish, Italian, whatever, they moved into America and now that family has existed for generations. Yeah, they, did they, did they move in through slavery like most Irish Americans did. Uh, n no, maybe. I mean, sure. But <laughs> I guess, well, let's say, let's say Italian, maybe, okay. or, right. or German or exactly. something. It's just, I'm just saying like a white guy that came to the country. 
uh, after slavery had already ended. It's like, can you really burden them with reparations when it wasn't their bloodline that did the bad thing? I guess not. That, that's, that's a fair question. Yeah. Mm. That's true. So that's just what I think. Anyone else got an opinion? Roosevelt, what you think, man? Yeah. Sure. I think, uh, like, who does this fall on, essentially? Now. This is a good idea. Reparations? Yeah. Company owners. You, I, mean, you, I really don't know. I mean, because it's like, I feel like uh, they should do it, but I feel like if they did do it, it would be like a like a negative effect, basically. It's going to be something negative to come with that. Like, that's a huge positive for black folks, but... You know, it's always something on the tail end. You know what mm-hmm. I think the one negative would be? The Fortune 500s that have to take their losses and will affect our economy because of that. Yeah, that's a factor. I think that the saltiness will also be another one. Like yeah. the, the saltiness of the people that have to do the, give the money. I think there would be a huge upsurge in actual racism. racism. Ra- exactly. Yeah, like it, right. it, would, it would have an adverse effect and it would be... So sure at its yeah. like highest. Yeah, and it's interesting because we actually did sort of get like an example of this. It wasn't race based, but with the whole student loan thing, you know, like people were like, "Well, yeah. why should oh, yeah. we yeah. pay your student loan?" That's yeah. true. Everyone got into the trolley problem. Everyone yeah. truly yeah. wondered: is my is my education less now? Yeah. Is, was my education not worthy of being relieved? Right. Hmm. You know, so it, it poses some pretty serious questions. So it's almost like if you're putting, like, you're dropping, like, am I racist on, on all these people? Like, yeah. am, mm-hmm. am I a and racist? They're yeah. Yeah. the really racist people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the racists are going to pop out. But yeah. you got to think, like, there's a lot of racist grandmas still alive oh, right yeah. now. They're like, right. there's they're plenty of them. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to like this. Oh, I, I personally think that Her social security's all, paying this uh, new black kids, you know, tuition. You know, if if it's just gonna make petrol and 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 gunpowder more expensive and, and uh, what else, you know, pretty much every other Fortune Five, like sugar, it's gonna make all that stuff more expensive. I see it as just like a grand awakening. Yeah, mm-hmm. might as well just give, uh, like, just do it, run it. Yeah, because is there- it's time. Is there a way you can make reparations without necessarily giving money? Like, do you think there's anything they, like maybe property or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I like how that one sounds. It's, it's, actual, it's actual freedom. Okay. Give everyone so, property. Give everyone land. Divide it up by... Fa- but think about this. Um, it, if, if you go down that route, you probably have to, um, you know, you probably have to take into account, like, okay, well, we can give properties to, like, families. And so it's like you're going to isolate, like, maybe the black families or something like that. That's a good place to start. I, I think that would be a good place to start. Unless you start taking to the statistics of, like, how many, like, I guess, well, because then you're, like, you have a lot of, like, segmented families in the black culture. So it's, like, you know, you have, like, women with kids but without a father. So it's, like, when you start divvying it up like that, it's, like, when you start looking into the finer details, you might also run into a secondary problem of, like, not enough black people qualifying as families or something like that. Or, you know, you're giving houses to, you know, uh, our men are getting cut out of the deal, essentially. Like, a lot of men are getting cut out because it's like, oh, I'm not with a woman. I feel like it's going to have the, the opposite effect of what's been happening to the, the average black American household for the last 100 years. Yeah, and it could have a welfare effect to where, like, it could... Uh, well, actually, no. If you give it to families, maybe it might incentivize people to get together versus, like, the welfare yeah. state where... It's it's stop destroying n- n- yeah. nuclear families. It's going to... It's gonna, incentivize families being together yeah, and, and working house. for each other and having a property actually that like that actually being feasible True. and not just being pushed into where gentrification feeds you. One idea that I had was that if uh, all people were just given like the ability to be educated as reparations. I've heard that that's one too. Yeah, just free pretty, education. That's pretty epic. I like that one. Like too. Just it's, say, a, hey, it's not a good place to start. You can't go to you can't go to like a you know Ivy League school for free, but maybe you just go to yeah. you get to go to All right. <laughs> I think, but well, because here's the thing: if you just give somebody money, then they can easily mess their life. Yeah, ed- so money without education is just like, well, yeah. you know, I, that's what I'm recipe that's a great for place to start. Disaster. I'm like, yo, give give everyone a master, give everyone an associate's degree, <laughs> even and, even the babies, man, just, just come out the womb. <laughs> I mean, you know, general I, studies. There you I, go. I've been, I, I've, I've thought about crazy ideas, like even uh, like kind of giving everyone the chance to join the military for a small time, so that they can gain benefits. I mean, and if we're if if if, if we're doing something as broad as and powerful as reparations, I'm good on that. National education is very strong in the south. They, you know, they're giving out degrees too, and and, yeah. and, and yeah. that comes with it. And I think that's something that's powerful. So if we're if we're giving out reparations. You know, it's just as powerful as what we give a soldier. Yeah. Why don't we, let's give them a degree too. Yeah, I think about things like the military the same as like, you know, like 
would it be fun for you to go into a field, pick up a piece of corn, and then bite into it? Would that be fun for you? No, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's fun. I mean, do I have to do it? No, you don't have to do it. But I'm just, I was talking, I was talking, I'm talking oh, to you. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, they, they love that <laughs> moment where they go out into the field, grab some corn, and bite into it. Yeah. Those are the guys that are going to be fighting in the wars. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have much, like, they're not like city people. <laughs> I don't know if this point makes sense. Does that make sense? Or Is it, no, no, no. It makes no, a lot of yeah, sense yeah, to me. Yeah, I, I yeah, get it. Something very different. different. Yeah, like there's yeah. there's a different like a totally different culture when you go to like those areas where like the simple life ideology is like very like it's in their music like you listen to country music and it's literally just like a whole well, song I, about this man went and had a beer and I that's love it. my god my gut and my fat wife that's true nothing like Good a dirt truck. road a red truck <laughs> <laughs> okay I think we should wrap this up oh yeah yeah we've been going this has been a good one uh, so make sure you guys check us out man uh, hopefully we get our reparations so we can buy some new studio equipment um, yeah. but uh, yeah you can check us out on Apple Podcasts you can check us out on Spotify YouTube Rumble every platform where there's audio or video uh, remember, you can go to Patreon and get access to all of the catalog of My Black Friends podcast. Uh, there's about 80 episodes for you to go through. So, you know, there's tons of fun content where we're sort of just, you know, chilling and talking for about, you know, an hour or two. Yeah. Um, this may be one of those topics, too, we might revisit because I feel like, you know, it's very expansive. But, um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed what we did so far. Um, like I said, check out all the content and everything, guys. And uh, I think that'll wrap it up for us. All right, let's pop out of here. Peace. Peace.